So welcome everybody um, again um, to our Safe Speeds in Cities webinar, part of the Safer City Streets uh, initiative at the ITF. Um, and uh, just before we start, I'd like to thank also the FIA Foundation um, that makes the uh, initiative possible with a very generous grant. Um, we're, if you could go to the next slide. So this is a second uh, webinar uh, session in a series that will uh, debate the city's recent strategies for road safety. And today we're focusing on efforts to reduce and enforce could you go back and hold the slides, Alex, rather than letting them circulate? So yeah, today uh, we're looking at reducing and enforcing, reducing speeds and enforcing speed limits. Um, and we're looking at uh, experience in three of the cities in the Safe City Streets Initiative, uh, which comprises 48 cities at the moment worldwide. We're looking at three of the most dynamic cities in South America, uh, Bogota, Fortaleza, and Buenos Aires. Um, each of these um, have case study experience discussed in our very recent publication. If you can go to the next slide, Alex. Um, best practice for urban road safety. Um, and the debate today will highlight their strategies to secure public support um, and the challenges that they face in the context of rapidly rising motorization, uh, rapidly rising use of motorcycles, and a, an environment where addiction to speed is very much uh, part of the context and they'll talk about the results that they have achieved so far. So we can go to the next slide. So our speakers um, today are Adriana Jakosovic from who is the uh, manager of the Road Safety Observatory in Buenos Aires, Claudia Diaz who's the director for road safety in Bogota and Dante Rosado, who's the executive coordinator for Fortaleza in the Bloomberg Philanthropies Initiative for Global Road Safety. Um, uh, so just to introduce um, the subject, speed of course is a primary factor um, in the severity of crashes um, and the safety of people walking and cycling on city streets. Uh, and speed management is one of the most effective road safety policies. Of course, when speed increases, not only uh, is the risk of a crash greater, but its severity increases with speed in terms of the uh, injuries that are likely to be inflicted. Um, the Stockholm Direct Declaration uh, that came out of the United Nations uh, ministerial meeting earlier this year includes guidelines for establishing 30 kilometer hour as the speed limit on urban streets where there's a mix of vulnerable road users and motor vehicle traffic and for limiting speeds on all urban roads to a maximum of 50 kilometers an hour. And we heard last week uh, at the first of our series of webinars that uh, quite a few cities are going further with the case of uh, the central part of London now looking seriously introducing 20 kilometers an hour as the standard speed across all of its streets. And um, improving the quality uh, of the street environment is the other part, the design of streets uh, that local authorities um, take and are testing solutions that are both low cost and rapid to implement uh, to contribute to the reduction of injury and crash risk. And we'll hear also about that today. So the main question for all of our speak three speakers today is, how did your cities manage to implement speed reduction initiatives that are often highly controversial? And how did you communicate successful results and engage with the public? So with those few words of introduction, I'd like to uh, turn to our first uh, speaker, um, which uh, will actually be um, in a different order from this slide. We'll start off with Claudia in Bogota, and then we'll hear straight away from Fortaleza, from Dante, and then we'll turn to Adriana in uh, Buenos Aires. So Claudia, if you're ready to go, you can take over control of the slides and of the uh, webinar. Thank you very much, Steve, and thank you for inviting us to present the Bogota experience in uh, managing uh, speed limits. So, 
Okay, yeah, you see my screen now, yes? Okay, so the city has its management in speed, uh, speed management program, which was released in 2018 as part of the programs to be developed under the city's road safety plan. Uh, this program aims to manage safe speeds in corridors and redefine speed limits in the different type of areas of the city. So this program is divided in three, uh, in three levels. The first one and the one that I'm going to be focused on in the next slides is set a speed, a maximum speed limit of 50 kilometers per hour in the city, where this limit applies mostly all the uh, to, mostly to all the main roads of the city. Then uh, we have residential, commercial, and school areas where the speed limit should be no more than 30 kilometers per hour or 40 when we're talking about commercial zones. So we are coping with these with speeding and finding a way to get citizens to understand why it is so important to raise this issue and work for safe speed limits. So having limited resources, and I'm sure this is the case for all for a lot of cities, there was a need to prioritize the major needs of the city. In this case, in the case of Bogota, we decided to start focusing a great part of our efforts in managing speed. So this figure here represents our approach. The strategy was gradual and it started from data analysis to determine those critical roads of the city that presented road crashes and fatalities and where speed records show, that, show us that imposed limits were not respected. Then in order to get citizens involved in the process of changing the maximum speed limit of the city, we uh, which before was 60, but but really no one seemed to really know that it was 60. So whenever they call, uh, they will drive at 80 or even more. So raising awareness of the magnitude of the burden of, your, of road crashes in the city, as well as the public health problem was our next step. Also speeding has required a great and a continuous work in the development of communication and education strategies in order to re-engineer the road safety discourse and make it easy for citizens to grasp the issue and the message with support and, and sending messages with supporting data. So this uh, followed by changes in the infrastructure, in this particular case, speed limit signals, and last but not least, all about enforcement. So these efforts have gradually allowed us to refute the normality of road crashes deaths and position that the loss of lives on the roads as unacceptable. So back in 2018, we decided to go first with the fifth mass critical corridors. And by the end of 2019, we completed 10 that accounted for only, that accounted for the 40% of, of the deaths of the city and that only represented the 19% of the road network. So by the end of 2019, the results were 49 life saves on the roads, and the difference in time from traveling from 60 to 50 was around 34 more seconds in a 10 kilometer journey. So this is really important to show that, you know, like changing the maximum speed limit really has a small impact on the time travel. The, the time we, we spent on traveling. And additionally, the first three months of 2020, we had a 38% reduction. Then, well, you know, the pandemic happened. So in the spirit to respond to this other pandemic crisis and use it also as an opportunity to do as many things as possible to protect our citizens, and not only from the virus, but for those who still needed to go out and face empty streets, we reduced the citywide speed limit to 50 kilometers per hour on May. So what we see in this figure is that as the lockdown began, we had, of course, a drop in the fatalities due to road crashes in the city. In the first weeks of the lockdown, we registered zero deaths. But as you see, as the time passed, the scenario started to change. While under normal circumstances, we register 10 deaths per week, we were registering five deaths. But, mobility of, but the mobility of the city was reduced by 80%. So it was not enough. So as the weeks passed, we started noticing that we were reaching normal figures after two months of the lockdown, particularly the proportion of motorcyclists. 
began to rise. So as soon as we hit the first week with six deaths, we certainly send this SOS message and the mayor decreed the maximum speed limit of 50 kilometers per hour on May. And so what we can see here in this other figure is that the percentage of deaths during the lockdown occurring on arterial roads compared to 2019. And there was a clear increase of almost 50% of deaths compared under, compared under normal circumstances. So we have the zero is the 2019 year as a reference. And as soon as we set the new speed limit, fatalities dropped dramatically during the first weeks. Um, unfortunately, I don't have all the answers uh, to the questions this graphic may raise, but we can see that as the city started to adopt lockdowns by areas, uh, the peaks of the road crashes deaths in the city concede with those lockdowns when, when, when those lockdowns were over. So, how, however, as the, at, the, um, at the end of August, um, the lockdown par uh, had particularly Finish, have practically finished, and we could again have a reduction in the road crash fatalities in the main roads at the same as the same levels as May. So we believe this measure has managed to sustain a reduction close to 40% in fatalities in the main roads corridors of the city. So what does this new mobility mean to us now? So it means that Bogota has to protect the lives of citizens while traveling and has to facilitate their access to opportunities, goods and services prioritizing the most vulnerable ones. So in order to make that happen, to, pro to provide safe seats is still at the core of all our, of all, our, all, 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 all the, I'm sorry, um, to provide safe speed limits is still at the core of all of the interventions we made we want more people walking and cycling. We want people to feel and be safe in our streets. So we need to keep on managing speed and keep on talking about the consequences of speeding. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Claudia. That raises a lot of questions. And if, if you do have questions to put to Claudia and the other speakers, please use the question and answer function in, uh, in Zoom. And um, we'll put those together and you'll have a chance to hear them answered um, towards the end of the meeting. Um, so now if we could switch on without delay to Dante, and I have a couple of questions for you, Claudia, when we come back uh, to the uh, discussions. So Dante, you're up now, if you can take control with your slides. Okay, thank you. So uh, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to say that it's a pleasure and an honor to join this webinar and to join with Adriana and Claudia from Buenos Aires in Bogota. And also I'd like to say that it's very important to, for, to Fortaleza to be part of the Safe Street City Initiative. So uh, Fortaleza, it's a city in Brazil, in the Northeast of Brazil. It has 2.6 million inhabitants. It's the fifth in Brazil in terms of population. It has 1.1 million vehicles. Uh, almost 30% of the fleet is motorcycles, which is a huge problem here for us. And the city has uh, an area of 314 kil square kilometers. So why I'm talking here uh, about Fortaleza? It's because Fortaleza transformed its Uber mobility in the past years, implement low cost interventions, with high impact in time of economic re recession in Brazil. Uh, definitely, <clears throat> the main outcome of these transformations is the reductions in the number of traffic fatalities. Since 2014, uh, the city registered five reductions in a row, and in the past year, uh, registered 198 deaths, which is still a huge number. Uh, so uh, comparing the traffic fatality rates between 2010 and 2019, the city uh, has a reduction of 50.3% and in the past year uh, registered uh, a track fatal rate of 7.4 uh, deaths per 100 inhabitants. 
So uh, the purpose of this presentation is to describe an essential part of this transformation, as I said, started in 2014, which uh, culminates in creating a speed management culture in the city. Here uh, we have the main milestones of this process. I'm not going to describe everyone. Uh, the purpose here is uh, just to give an idea that it's a, it was an incremental progress in the city. Now we can see, we can say that the city has a, a speed management program. Uh, I'd like also to highlight that before 2014, excuse me, as, uh, before 2014, I would like to highlight that the, the city had just an uh, isolated strategy focused in the excessive speed because the city understood that the, the, the speeding problem was just a, a bad behavior or non legislation compliance. But after 2014, in the following years, the city could realize that. Uh, the inappropriate speed also is also a problem, and it, it was very important to to the progress of the uh, of the speed management strategies. So we have here some examples of interventions and actions that the city uh, implemented in the past years. We have uh, uh, district redesign interventions, engagement and, and communication efforts, uh, speed limit reductions in the main arterial roads, and society uh, engagement and mass media campaign. So the fact is that between, after 2014, the city moved from isolated strategies to an integrated approach uh, involving strategies with, uh, with surveillance, strategies, enforcement, street redesign, communication, and engagement. So here's the, the current framework of the Fort Laser Speed Management Plan. Uh, uh, and we're ha here in the bottom, we have these strategies focusing one or both of the problems. In, in, the, in the right, we have the surveillance strategies that is important to identify the problem, to lead and, and plan the strategies, and also to access this, this, these strategies. So now I'm going to describe one of these interventions, this, uh, the reductions, uh, the, redu the speed limit reduction in the arterial road. The city decided to move in these directions in 2018. And for this, uh, decide to, to select the most unsafe arterial road in the city to pedestrians, the last forest uh, avenue. Uh, and in, in, this, in 10 years, uh, more than 100 deaths was registered, registered on this road, most of them pedestrians and cyclists. Uh, this information was massively used in the, the, communications, the communication actions uh, uh, to convince the population about the importance of to, to move with this intervention. So here we have an example of the surveillance information used to support and to lead uh, uh, the intervention. Uh, the main action of the intervention definitely uh, was the speed limit change, but other uh, interventions were also implemented as lane narrowing, the traffic lights, bike lane, and curb extensions. And this was important because the city could describe the intervention not just as speed limit change, but also as an uh, infrastructure improvement. So it helped uh, to draw attention of uh, the speed limit change. So it, it helped to the city to, to implement it. Uh, here we have the cro road cross section of, of the, the, the avenue before and after the intervention. And we can see here the, the reduction in the traffic lane, uh, the, to the drive lanes. Uh, it's very important to, to reduce the drive speeds, but also to give room space to other users, in this case, to, the, to put a, a bike lane. Uh, the, the main outcomes of the interventions uh, is the reduction of 29% of, of, of crash involved deaths or severely injured victims, and the reduction of 63% in crash involving dead or injured pedestrians. Here we have the, the numbers of vehicles above 50 kilometers per hour in the avenue before and after the intervention. And you can see that uh, after the intervention, the, the drivers uh, follow the new speed limit. Uh, most of them follow uh, the speed limit. So now the city is scaling up this intervention. Now the city has 30 kilometers of arterial road with speed uh, uh, limit adequation and, uh, and counting every month new, 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 new streets. So the key lessons of the process uh, the, the, is the implementation confirm the close link between speed and safety outcomes. It's need time to change behavior and beliefs. An incremental progress to change the high speed culture can work. 
as, as happened here in Fortaleza. Uh, the speed is more than our behavior or non loan legislation compliance problem and in, also involved in appropriate speed. In the urban design, the street design is very important to, to ensure it. Uh, the pilot had an important role in this process where the ideas could be tested and then uh, scale it up. And the surveillance and communication forts are supportive but essential uh, in this process. So that's it. Uh, thank you uh, to join uh, this webinar. Thank you very much, Dante. And that last slide shows the other dimension to what you're doing, which is so uh, powerful, I think, is the uh, very beautiful and effective uh, redesign of the streets, often with just paint to uh, shield off areas for to give more space to the pedestrians and think South America in general has been much more creative than many other parts of the world in showing us what can be done. Um, a lot of questions are coming in, which is great, um, but we'll move on straight away to Buenos Aires um, with you, Adriana. Okay, great. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the invitation. We are very happy to be part of this panel. I'm going to present the vast pedestrian collision reduction strategy implemented in Buenos Aires City. As you might, may know, Buenos Aires has uh, had bold initiatives to promote walking and public transportation use in the central areas of the city. However, bus and pedestrian collisions remain first in the fatality ranking during several years. And during 2018, we had an increase of pedestrian fatalities. So we decided to devote all our efforts to reduce this trend. We first uh, tried to understand where these uh, collisions occur, and we find out that 30% of these bus and pedestrian collisions occur around transfer centers, and that in the last years, seven out of 10 of these transfer centers have had at least one pedestrian uh, fatality. So we made a ranking of um, the risk of these different transfer centers, and when de we decided to make interventions in the two more risky ones. We also make in that investigation of the risk factors involved in those crashes. We find out that excessive speeding on behalf of buses, bright light violations, and also pedestrian improper crossing were the main uh, risk factors involved in those crashes. With those factors in mind, we uh, choose to, uh, to resolve the problem with a safe system approach. We decided to manage speed we also work with the users, specifically with the bus drivers, uh, by giving them training in safe driving and also by enforcement. And we also modify the infrastructure. Importantly, all these changes were made uh, in stages. We first started with the infrastructure changes. We uh, introduced the speed bumps. We modified the traffic light cycle to make it longer for pedestrians, to, to make them give them more time to cross. Then we set up the meetings with the bus companies. Here we let them know what changes we had made, which was the problem, and we asked them to engage uh, in the solution, involving also the bus drivers. We offered them help to train uh, the, the, bus, the bus drivers, and we let them know which were going to be the following steps, uh, that we were going to start enforcing those uh, behaviors, and also that after several months, we will be uh, lowering the speed limit. The speed limit was 40 kilometers per hour, but we found out that this was improper for the high level of uh, vulnerable road users running around. So we decided to down it to 30 kilometers per hour. And we evaluated the whole strategy before, during, and after the intervention. We were measuring speeding, red light violations, and also road fatalities. Here you can see uh, the percentage of buses um, running over the speed limit. In blue, those who were over 40 kilometers per hour, that was the speed limit. And, uh, and in gray, you may see the, the buses going over 30 kilometers per hour. As we introduced the different changes, when we introduced the speed bumps, we were able to reduce the percentage of buses going uh, speeding. But then when we started the speed enforcement actions, we reduced the limit even more. 
And once we achieve a good compliance, um, like 99% of buses were compliant with the 40 kilometers per hour limit, then when uh, we uh, down the speed limit to 30. And we were able to follow up this even six months uh, later, and 95% of uh, buses were uh, compliant with the new speed limit. We also measured and uh, apply enforcement strategy for red light violations. Uh, here we made a slight but important change and the speed enforcement and red light uh, violations enforcement was made on, on the streets. We stopped the bus and gave them the ticket at the moment because usually our electronic system takes several weeks um, for the ticket to be uh, delivered to the, to the company or to the, or to the car. And here uh, it was immediate. So this helped a lot for the driver to, to associate their behavior with the consequences. And uh, as we can see in the graphic, we were able to reduce these violations and we were able to replicate it in two different transfer centers at different moments in time. So this makes this uh, result stronger. Importantly, we find out that in both transfer centers, fatalities went to zero. This uh, amazing result show us that if we work with the correct risk factors, vision zero is something that we can achieve. Finally, uh, the implemented strategy based on safe system approach proved to be effective in reducing pedestrian fatalities at transfer centers. This has an impact, it had an impact of 50% reduction in bus pedestrian collisions at the city level from 2018 to 2019. And the results showed that managing speed was a key factor to reduce fatalities as speed and reduced much more than red light violations. So this means that human errors might still happen, but if they occur at a slow speed, pedestrians still can be safe. And uh, it is also important to remark that involving and having the support of the bus companies increased measures of acceptability and also the, the success of the whole strategy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adriana. And uh, while you're still there, um, a, question, a broader question for you. I know that your road safety plan has just been updated uh, for um, to take it beyond, previously it was 2016, 2019, and I think now you've adopted a new one for the next uh, few years. Uh, are there things that have changed? Is there anything uh, new that you can tell us about? Well, the new plan, we are going to put much, uh, put much more focus on uh, managing speed with these uh, different strategies. Uh, we have already started to lower some limits in important avenues uh, next to the um, implementation of uh, cycle lanes. And we are also focusing in uh, measures that have uh, proven effects. We have scientific support that, that are going to be the, the focus. And yeah, speeding and drinking and driving are the main strategies. Also, um, a broader focus on motorcyclists that, as in Fortaleza and in Bogota, are the main fatal victim in, in our city. Right. And we had questions coming in uh, from the question and answer box about enforcement uh, in some of the other cities as well. But I know in your case, enforcement is uh, pretty effective. We had a conference for the Safer City Streets Network in Buenos Aires uh, last year, and you took us out to see your enforcement efforts in the uh, one of the nights, uh, particularly there was for alcohol. But in general, your enforcement strategy for the buses is very uh, is very well developed with the education phase and then the and then the the uh, officials on the street. Um, but in general, does it work the same way? Are you based on specific cant campaigns? Are the police difficult to persuade to get onto the streets? How does it work? <laughs> uh, we take different approach depending on the uh, on the behavior we're enforcing. We, we had a huge experience with drinking and driving, but we try to give it uh, a lot of visibility to the to the, um, enforcement operations on the street. 
uh, we made them more visible and also we accompanied that with uh, a lot of media uh, presentations like in the newspapers and the TV especially in the at the end of the year for Christmas and New Year's Eve we accompanied that um, yeah and we are always measuring visibility and probability of being controlled so we can uh, monitor how it goes and if we need to increase the visibility or do some action to to increase the, the perception that it is probable to be controlled. Thank you. Um, and then turning to Fortaleza again, um, Fortaleza, Dante, is one of the few cities in the world that actually met the uh, targets established for the decade of action that's just been completed, uh, the decade of action of the UN for road safety in halving the number of uh, traffic fatalities in the last decade. Um, so can you give us an idea what proportion of that success was down to managing speed? Yeah, uh, the speed management uh, has a major uh, role in this process. I, I, I believe that without this progress, we couldn't achieve this, this target. So uh, I believe that we, the city have to improve it, of course, but I think you have a, a, a good framework for now. And I, 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 I believe that in the next years, the, this framework can be uh, institutionalize it through our road safety plan and also the city could uh, uh, can see the progress much more progress in the the, the number of, of traffic fatalities and also in the injury victims so I, I think if, you ha if I have I have to, to say ad advice to other cities uh, that you have to put the, the, the speed management in the central uh, of the attentions of the road safety uh, structures. Yeah, and that fits very much with the safe system approach to uh, road safety, um, where you need an integrated approach in whatever part of the uh, system you're looking at. But speed is really at the core of everything we try to do to reduce the impact uh, energies to a level that won't cause serious damage. I'm looking a bit forward to the future, you've got elections coming up for the uh, for a new mayor in 2021. Uh, it's always a bit nerve wracking to know if the policies are going to be continued if you get a change in government. Are there things that can be done and things that you are doing to prepare the way so that you get continuity uh, in the success that you've been achieving? Yeah, it, it's always hard when you have a change in the, the, the administration. In fact, in, in this year in Brazil, is the election for the, the, the mayors in all cities in Brazil. And the, the current mayor, the, he, he, he can't be elected. So the city will uh, pass through this, this situation. But now the city, is, as, I, as I said in my past, past uh, answer, the city is preparing a road safety plan. Uh, and the idea is that this road safe can ensure the, the sustainability of the interventions and the actions, and also ensure the institutionalization. Uh, of course, just the road safety plan it, it can ensure it, but we hope that, it, 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 and we believe that it, it is a very important step in this process. Other, uh, as, I, as I said, uh, Fortaleza implements an incremental progress in, the, in its uh, road safety uh, policy. So it helped it to the, the, the population to understand the benefits and to understand the, 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 the intervention. Uh, we had an important uh, element in this process re uh, related with the communication effor efforts. Uh, the communication is very important in this process and it, we, we use it very well here in the city. So we we believe that the population now is understanding better the, 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 the intention of the interventions, the intention that the, the purpose of the, the, the intervention is to save lives. So uh, I believe and I, and I hope that in the next years, even with, with the new mayor, we, the city can, can move with the same energy to, to, to face uh, this huge problem. Uh, thanks. And, and Claudia, the um, same question really goes to you because you've just been through the transition. You were director for the last four years under the previous uh, administration. And then this year you have a new mayor, uh, Claudia Lopez. 
Um, and did that change of mandate impact the speed management strategy of Bogota? I'm sorry, I was on mute. So yes, on January 1st uh, of this year, let's say Bogota started a new era with the first woman, uh, woman elected as mayor of our city. Uh, so with her, we have now a four-year plan, brain as a new social and environmental contract uh, conceived to fight economic and gender inequality, fully aligned with the SDGs and aim to promote sustainability, sustainable mobility and social inclusion. So this plan, um, to answer your question, set a goal to reduce 20% of the number of deaths due to road crashes by 2023. So this is what will keep road safety as a priority for the city for the coming years so that the hard work that come with, comes with it. So we will be working really hard to make that happen and not only reach 20%, we hope that we will reach even more. So this was possible thanks to, I believe, thanks to the evidence showing the reductions in road crash fatalities uh, that the city has accomplished and how speed management as the main axis, axis has been effective in this path of saving lives. So, uh, um, so for this reason, uh, it was possible for road safety to continue being an important part of the mayor's agenda, and also that the speed strategy continues to have a, an impulse that technique and good practices demand us. So being able to show that this is working, this is the right path, that road safety has to be a priority, that speed management, you know, like has to be part of it. Uh, she, she, yeah, yeah, she's fully commitment. Our new secretary, Nicolas Estupiñan, is committed to this. And we know that we cannot provide sustainable mobility if people is still dying in our streets. So it's, like, it's part of the whole package. We need to save lives and we need to promote, uh, you know, like cycling, walking, but we want to make it safe. So that's part of our new plan. 20% reductions for the next 40 years on fatalities. Very good. You got lucky partly uh, with having very good people taking over who are already committed. But this yes. um, making sure the new agenda also the politicians understood the role of road safety and their new priorities was clearly important. And after our last week's uh, webinar, we had a lot of questions about uh, equity, both socioeconomic e equity and gender equity, and how road safety is very much integrated as part of that agenda. So maybe it's something we can return to in a future webinar and get you back. And the experience in Mexico City has been very interesting there as well. But we, there's a technical question or another question on this kind of government coordination for you, because uh, in Colombia, the National Transport Ministry uh, has to authorize the use of speed radars. And you know, this is common in many countries. They, you don't, at the city level, have all the tools in your hand. You're dependent on the national authorities to allow you the, to or to confirm your decisions for some of the interventions. So with speed radars, uh, you implemented them recently uh, at the end of 2019. Did you face difficulty in getting these authorizations from the national government? And is there any lessons to be shared on how you went about it? Well, yeah. Um, well, uh, the national government through the Ministry of Transport and the National uh, Road Safety Agency uh, have made an effort to ensure that detection systems respond to a need uh, in mobility and road safety. Uh, so we need to, well, all cities have to demonstrate that with evidence that actually those uh, radars, cameras are going to comply, you know, like are, are going to be used in, in terms to save lives. So I think like for Bogota, it, ha it has been a good starting point, given the effort of the Secretary of Mobility to have evidence-based decision-making in road safety. In this case, the life-saving cameras that uh, we, we had, of course, every new process, some difficulties, you know, like even by feeling the formats and trying to know to, to sort of like speak the same language. But, 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 but I think that, um, that, that, that is a good process in terms of what they want is to make sure we're saving lives. We want to save lives. So it's more, you know, like it's more like a procedure, but, but we share the same philosophy. So, so that made a, make it, make, make it like easy in a way, but also like 
difficult in another way that it was a new process, but it was just uh, 2018 was, you know, we, we, we were going back and forward trying to, you know, comply all the specifications from the ministry and the agency, but at the end we got all the approvals we need and, and we're working on it and we're actually that made us, you know, like work together closer and, and have, you know, like uh, a, a, a easy conversation around road safety, safe, uh, the cameras, radars, and all the technology that need, needs to be, you know, like used in order to, to 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 take the best out of those technologies and out of uh, and and make a really comprehensive enforcement strategy for the city. Okay, and uh, a couple of questions came in for you in the question and answer box um, about enforcement how you do that in Bogota and um, you know, how important is, are the radars as part of the strategy? Are they a major part, a minor part? What else do you do? Well, when we first started uh, in 2018, uh, we did not have this life-saving cameras back then. So what we were doing is we pol check police points, you know, on site, trying, we were trying to be in the most critical points for, um, and trying to be there also at some, uh, like, you know, I, if not every night, but trying to be constant in with the presence of the police in the streets, in the most critical corridors. So people were, were hearing that we were lowering the speed limits. They were hearing that it was just in some part of the cities. And they were, when they were driving in those, you know, roads, they were looking that the police was there. So it was sort of like a whole package, like communication, enforcement, uh, all together, and, and changes, of course, of signals in the in the corridors. But it was uh, like a combined effort between enforcement, due to that we only have the police, you know, like the human resources, so you need to take the most out of it. And but uh, we 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 put sort of like put it together with the communication strategy. So we were showing like, hey, the police is everywhere, and when we're look the, and in the places that we were, we were lowering the limits, that the, the police is going to be there. And maybe not the whole day, but they will be there in the hours they need to be. So that was like at the beginning, like our strategy. Then we start like, as, as, as we were talking before, like working with the Minister of Transportation and the National Road Agency, Road Safety Agency, to have these new cameras in the city. Now we have 43 cameras around the city they are in the like these cameras were um selected to be at the most critical points of the city in terms of road safety so so that for sure help us like a lot they start like working all together on may as well like we announced the the new maximum speed limit for the city and the next days we were announcing that the cameras were let's say like on and they were going to start like uh, you know like um, looking to everyone and and finding people so so yeah so it's part of the process like just the message here is like it's a whole thing combined like it's not just enforcement it has to a lot of to do with communication and how you communicate to people you know everything that is happening and well infrastructure changes first yeah and I think calling Thank them you. life saving cameras like you did is probably a key part of your communication as well. That's that's good. <laughs> and we had a broader question on uh, how did you overcome public opposition? And that came in from the question and answer box. And I'll put that also afterwards to uh, Dante and to Adriana. How did you deal with uh, opposition from the public? Well, there will be always like opposition. Um, We've been working the last three years. We still have a lot of work to do. People, so people still don't believe why speeding, you know, like is is killing people. So we need to, yeah, it, it, it will be a constant, but that, at the same time, that is what show us that we need to keep on, you know, fighting this. So first, um, just to, to give some answers, I think that the first thing you need and the first person that needs to be committed and all of this is the mayor of the, you know like the mayors of cities like if the mayor you know like believes in this that will make it very easy you know like the rest is just because in this case 
mayor, Peña, like the former mayor Peñalosa, and now Claudia Lopez, they are they engaged this, and they were the ones saying, yeah, this is the right way to go. So with that, you you as technicians, we can just you know like go and do our job, and well, and in in order to sort of like um, have uh, you know like um, try to not try to fight this controversial things is trying to have as many stakeholders as you can in you know like with you in so in this case in the case of Bogota like I, I will just mention three so I don't take much of the, of the time but I will say that the first stakeholders that we need to fight this is our own staff they are the ones that need to truly believe that this is the way to do things that we need to change the status quo and if all our staff is, you know, like believes in these things are easier, uh, then we have um, the journalists. Uh, so the way they understand road safety defines the way they will communicate the problem of road safety. So if we both speak the same language, if they understand what we're trying to do, why are we doing what we're doing, they will be able to communicate even better than us as a technician. What are we doing? It's the right thing to do. And well, last but not least, we, we need a community. We need to get community in this. We need to work together with them as, um, you know, like having them involved in, pro in the process, maybe not when talking about arterial roads, but when we go to the neighborhoods, we talk to them when we do some traffic calming, you know, measures, uh, working together with and, and, you know, and, and give the, 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 the neighborhood they deserve that will, and if they see, you know, like they can have a better city, a safer neighborhood, they will uh, sooner, you know, like they will sooner like understand why we're doing this and just be part of this process. So I will say that. All right, we better yes, update please. our uh, publication to put some of those keywords in. <laughs> Adriana, were there any uh, tips from Buenos Aires you wanted to add? Uh, similar to Claudia mentioned, uh, last year we had the experience of um, um, installing cameras in a very important avenue uh, surrounding the city. And there the experience was to show the problem, tell them, tell the press, tell the, the community which was the problem, how many people have died there, and why we were doing um, those that action and, and that helped a lot. It was very good. Uh, it has a lot of uh, acceptance. Um, so it, it is mainly like sh uh, sharing information, showing the problem, showing the progress, how does it, how does it work, which are the benefits, uh, explaining every time they ask why you are doing that. And yeah, trying to engage NGOs with you as well, like they, they have to be your allies on the, on the measures. And yeah, that, that's the main thing. Of course, there is always uh, it's going to be opposition, but uh, we can, you have to keep on explaining why we are doing, we have a good reason. And Dante, same or different in uh, Fortaleza? Yeah, I think Claudia answered almost everything about the, 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 how to deal with it. But I, I, I'd like to write like the importance to bring the stakeholders to your side. Of course, it's easy to say, but it's hard to, to put in practice. Uh, it's take time to, to do it. Uh, it's very important to, to convince the journalists. In general, the journalists, they, they have the same thoughts of the general population. They think road safety as the, as the, oh, the, the, the general people see it. So in, in, to uh, call them to, 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 to join in training is very important. In the, in the past years, we have three training with them, explaining the problem, explaining the, the importance to, to, to deal with speeding, the importance to, to change the, the, the street design, to, to prioritize the vulnerable users. So uh, I, I would say that, I would add just that it, it, it's very important to, to have the journalists on your side. And of course, to engage the community, to engage the, the, the secretaries, the mayor, 
the political view is very important to 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 give power to you to 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 do the, the right things and 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 you okay. have to unfortunately you have to to wait time to 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 see change in the people mindset right so there are far too many questions for me to have kept track of all of them so i'd like to hand over at this point to Rafaela to bring up some of the other questions that have been through, put through uh, from all of you uh, listening um, we had many, many questions, many interesting questions. Um, and regarding the same topic, uh, people are asking if you faced, for instance, um, a discourse or a narrative of travels being longer. Uh, and that was for all three cities, but I think there is a, a specific question for Buenos Aires that is interesting. Um, when you reduce the speed of buses, did you had to increase the number of buses to keep the same level of service or not? Um, can you tell us a little bit more? Um, no, we, we didn't have to do any change in the number of buses. This measure was applied in a specific part of the, of the transport center, so it didn't affect the operation. It keep on uh, working very, very well. And we also let the, let the companies and the drivers know the results. We share with them the results and they, they were part of the strategy. They were really happy and proud of the results we achieved together. And yeah, that, that was great as well. Um, and Dante, in the case of Fortaleza, uh, because you also implemented uh, a lot of traffic lights, did you had an impact on that, or how did you uh, build your narrative to to show these measures as positive? Uh, we answered this type of opposition with with numbers. We have to to collect and show that the the, the travel speed, uh, time, the travel time didn't change. Uh, so we, as I said, it's very important to communicate the the effort before and after the, the intervention showing uh, wh what changed, uh, what changed. And so in this case, the use the information about uh, travel time is, is also important to, to show that, to, the, to, to show to the population that uh, it's, it's not a problem. Uh, in fact, we have, when you have uh, uh, reductions or in, in, uh, increase in the travel time, it's a, it's a better little uh, increase. So, uh, we have to, to collect this information before and after to convince the population. Claudia, how was that in Bogota? Did you calculate the traveling time increase or not, especially in the arterial roads? Well, um, yes, we we track the speeding, you know, like like the, the speed, uh, the you know, like in different uh, times of the hour of the of the day. Uh, so what we saw comparing like uh, the years before we start implementing uh, this, uh, you know, like the 50 kilometers per hour per corridors when and, and the after what, what was happening, uh, we had like a different, uh, a small difference, like it was uh, something like 29 seconds difference during the day uh, in a 10 kilometers journey and 34, sec uh, and 34 seconds. Uh, during the night hours. Uh, so really there is no like, you know, like when you ask people, like, are you willing to, you know, lose 30 seconds if you could save lives? So the answer will be yes. And it's really like just, we're just talking about 30 seconds in a 10 kilometer journey. And here like the average, it's probably around seven kilometers, uh, you know, per journey. So you're not really even losing a minute, it, you know, like driving at, 50 kilometers per hour. And that, uh, not, you know, like, yes, there's other factors like congestion and everything, but if you could drive, drive like, you know, like from 60 uh, compared to 50, you know, like going to 50, you will just lose 30 seconds. So, so it's totally worth it. And it's not having like a huge impact as I know like that question, we got that question a lot. Like if you are already congested, why do you want to lower the speed limits? Why do you want us to go, you know, like slower? Yeah. And it's like, no, it's, it doesn't work like that way. But, but I, I, we were saying like, we need to keep on working on how we communicate this 
and how it really impacts, in, you know, like what are the, 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 the real impacts of lowering speed limits and it doesn't have to do much with increasing like the, 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 the travel time journey that you're expecting. Thank you. Um, we have a question about financing these uh, road safety improvements. Uh, there is one person asking if any of the three cities have an experience of diverting revenues from the fines, from the penalties, to road safety directly. Or if not, if you have any other lesson or inspiration for people. I can start. Here in Brazil, all, all the, the money you raise from the fines, you have to uh, implement in the road safety policy in, in, in traffic intervention in general. Uh, so we have an ob obligation to do that. But in Fortaleza, we, we, beyond that, the city did something I think uh, is interesting that put all the money from the, the parking street. Uh, the people here in Fortaleza have to pay to street due to park in some, some street. So uh, uh, this money have to be used to improve the road, uh, the cycling infrastructure. So it's, it's helping to increase the number of bike lanes, to make bike lanes uh, more safe, safer. And so I think it's a, a good example. Well, for us, it's something a little bit like um, Fortaleza mentioned, but Fortaleza mentioned in the first case, like all the money we get is from the fines we impose. And to, to pretty much like all the money that we have for mobility, you know, like for all the mobility actions we want to make, they come from that money. So, and of course, like and everything we do has to, you know, like has to comply with, um, road safety criteria. So in a way, like everything that we do uh, comes from that, the money comes from that, and we have to make sure that we implement all the measures needed that the, that the city needs. Um, I, I'm talking just about the Secretary of Mobility, like we have other institutions, they have a different uh, other, you know, like other, other ways to, 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 to to work, but for the secretary mobility, the secretary of mobility only, like we, all the operation runs from what we get from from fines. Yeah. Uh, here, uh, of course, it is important to let the citizens know where the money goes. We are um, trying to to promote more and more the non-monetary penalties. Uh, we're improving our demerit point system, and yeah, we want to accompany our new electronic system with those type of measures. But let the people know it's not about money, um, it is about if you're in conditions, if you will be able to keep on driving if you respect the, the, the law and the norms. So thank you all very much. The hour has gone incredibly fast, but we've got to uh, the limit of the webinar. So Alex, if you could share the, uh, the, your screen again with the last couple of slides. There's just a couple of announcements about uh, what we have coming up next. Um, here it comes. Uh, so the next one. Yeah, so we'll have um, one more webinar this time next week uh, where we'll look at uh, identifying locations that are crash prone uh, before and try to avoid crashes happening in the first place. Uh, so that's on the 1st of October. Um, and if you go back to the other slide, uh, then in November, on the 23rd of November, um, normally we would be holding our annual uh, conference for the Safer City Streets Initiative, and it would have been in Guadalajara in Mexico, but COVID obviously means that we can't do that. So we will substitute it with one or two uh, webinars. Uh, to look at monitoring progress in uh, improving urban road safety. Uh, we'll have more presentations like we had today there. We won't be having the drinking and the socializing that goes with a real meeting, but we'll do uh, what we can to make sure the information still gets out. Um, so we'd like to welcome all of you back to those two events. And then today I'd just like to close by saying a very warm thank you to Dante, uh, Adriana and to Claudia 
Um, your presentations were fantastic. I'm sure there'd be a big round of applause now if any we could hear it from everybody. And thank all of you for joining us for the webinar today. It's important to us that we can keep communicating the results uh, of the initiative and we'll keep on doing that. So thank you all and thank you to Rafaela and to Alex for uh, making it work and uh, setting it up for us. Thank you everybody. <laughs>